we've been talking for the last two weeks about vision and how empowering vision is. I was really, really encouraged last night. I was, uh, you know, I was studying and scrolling Instagram. They both go together. <laughs> and one of our students in our, our youth ministry message, I posted about Vision Sunday, and one of, our t- and one of our students in our youth ministry messaged me back. She goes, this is one of the greatest series ever. And I was like, ever? I mean, like, I knew it was good, but how many of those ever is big? She goes, yeah. She said, what we've been learning on Sundays. And she said, uh, it, it coincides with what's going on, what we're talking about in our youth ministry. She goes, it's just the best thing ever. And the, the, the thing I want to talk about for two Sundays, we have been talking about vision. Now we want to talk, we've been talking about a little bit about what it is, a little bit about how it works. The next two Sundays, we're going to talk about what is our vision, what has God called us to do. And, and also the next thing is, how, how does that concern you? How does it connect with you? I want to say a couple of things that, that I want to kind of bring us into a more mature level of Christianity. I've been doing this for a long time. Some of us only have a vision. Uh, we only have a vision for God as long as our emotions are good. Some of us only have vision uh, until as long as we have friends. Some of us only have a vision from God until uh, as long as the money's good. When the money's not good, vision goes out the window. I just want to submit this thought to you as we start to jump in and talk more and learning how to rise and become. How many wants just to become more than you've always been before? The same old things you quit on, the same old things you give up on. We're going to dig a little bit deeper to help you get there. But you need to know the things that God puts in our heart to do It's not supposed to last as long as you just have good days. Some people change churches and quit teams only because, not because anything has to do with God, just because they had a bad day. If a bad day can ruin your walk with God, how do I say this? You're in trouble. Because bad days keep on coming. The goal is like football. No matter how many people try to tackle you, you just can't cough it up. You got to hold on to the rock. Come on, baby, the rock. Just so you know, the Oakland Raiders are preseason champions at this point. We're undefeated. And as long as the Raiders keep winning, you'll hear me talking. The second they start losing and the Niners win, I'll say, listen, this is the house of the Lord. I want to hear a bunch about football. We'll keep this place holy. I do have the mic, and yes, I am biased. Our theme scripture for our church since 1999, this is what we started our church on. Here's a scripture, Matthew chapter 9, 35 to 38. The Bible says Jesus traveled through all the towns and all the villages in the area, teaching in the synagogues and announcing the bad news. Yell it out. What is it? The sad news. So Jesus came, came around all the villages, and he was teaching the good news about the kingdom of God. And he healed every kind of disease and illness. The Bible says when he saw the crowds, how many of us were, how many, is anyone working in retail? Raise your hand if you work in retail or have worked in retail. Have you ever looked up and saw a line of 23 people and you were the only person at the register? (laughs) Have you ever been to Walmart or any other store where it seems like they have 22, they built 22 registers? (laughs) They, <laughs> they, they built so they spent a lot of money building registers, but there's no same money I got no one working the registers. So now you and 48 people are in line and your patience is being tested. <laughs> you loving Jesus and you're about to go crazy and be on the news. <laughs> when Jesus saw the crowds or the numerous amounts of people with need, he did not let the fear of it make him run away. He didn't run away. He wanted to get reinforcements. So when he saw the crowds, he had compassion because he didn't see them as degenerates, losers, uh, messes, uh, waste of space. No, Jesus saw them with compassion because they were. Jesus saw the people that were in trouble. He saw them as Um, people that were confused and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Or in other words, if they only had a shepherd to help them out, 
<laughs> they would be great if they only had some leadership. They would be great if they only had some good news. They would be great if they would just, uh, all the damage that they've done to their own lives, all the pains from their relationships, all their worries, they would be wonderful if they just had a shepherd to come along and say, I got you, you're going to be okay, I have a plan for your life, don't worry about it. Jesus saw people and he didn't run away from them. He said, there's so many of them, I have come, and then he identified them. They're people that are in need of a shepherd. They're not a mess because they're a mess. They're a mess because they got no help. And then he says they were confused and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. And then he calls because there's so many of them. He looks at the numerous amounts of people. He sees there's one of him. And he says this to his disciples. The harvest is great. It's everywhere. Don't tell me there ain't no one that needs Jesus. Well, you know, they just hate church because, well, everyone needs Jesus. One thing I'm sure of is everyone needs Jesus, for sure. They try to medicate. We try to, we keep trying, trying new relationships, and we keep trying new things. And now we got to do, you know, we got crystals, we got sage, we got all kinds of things to ward off spirits, new relationship, this friend, and that one didn't work out, and this is the love of my life, you know, you know, Instagram, me and this person in a relationship, best life ever. Three weeks later, dodge that bullet. We're up and down. You know what? We're trying to find some stability. And life is up and down all the time, not because God is up and down all the time. God says if these people had a shepherd, they'd just be all right. So he said to his disciples, uh, his disciples, he told his disciples, he said to his disciples, the harvest is great, but It's the workers, man. I got no help. We got a long line. I just can't get in one of the register. You ever ever stood in a long line? I'm patient in a lot of areas of my life. I'm really, I want to, but when it comes to standing in lines that has nothing to do with God or Jesus, I'm not patient. (laughs) Ask my kids, if I'm busy and we're in a long line, I will like, it won't take long until like I'm pretending to make an announcement over the intercom. <laughs> I'm sitting, we got our basket, 25 people. And then the, you ever see when you're like busy and then the person running the register thinks it's happy hour. So what are you doing today? <laughs> How's your week, girl? I'm off. <laughs> Y'all can hit a coffee date later. Let me tell you how my day is. Run it. Let's get this party started. Let's go. And when it gets so bad, I'll start. <laughs> forgive me. I'm just human. If it gets really bad, I'll, under my breath, I'll start saying stuff like, need another checker to aisle 12. <laughs> said that. said that. Some said, what was that? Like, I don't know. I think they're calling for more help. <laughs> Jesus can't find any help. <laughs> there are. There are people Jesus came to save, but they have no help. The mission of Jesus. Now, listen, you might have a different version of Jesus. And maybe the reason we're so off track is because your version of Jesus is only about him and you. And lollipops and sunshines and Cadillacs and money. Sorry, I had to throw in the lollipop part. Maybe the version of Jesus is just about you and him. And when you don't get what you want, you're going to take your ball and go home. You need to know the vision of Jesus Christ was to find people, find broken people, find hurting people, and not discriminate against them, not look down on them, see the worth of who they are. Jesus was willing to die for it, and we got to say, I don't care who you are, what color you are, what you've been through, God sees value in you, and I know you're a mess and you're acting crazy and breaking stuff, but you need to shepherd what you need. And if you had a shepherd and you'd listen, you would calm down. And you wouldn't have to try to do all these things. And you wouldn't work so hard to get affirmation because you'd have it from the only one that can ever affirm you for real on the inside. If your version of Jesus is just, God, I didn't get my house yet. God, where's my money? If your version of Jesus is only him and you, you do not have the vision of God to save the world like in John 3's teach. 16 and 17, your only vision is you and God and God do for you. And the Bible, God wants to do for you. 
God, I, we believe in prosperity. The Bible says it. Man, if he, God will prosper. We believe in it all day. But the goal of God isn't just to prosper you so you can do you, boo. <laughs> the goal isn't just so you can do you. God never said do you. The Bible says, why don't you just do what he wants you to do and not do you. The doing you reduces your vision down to where is my affirmation? Where is my respect? No one ever notices me. It was never about you and me. If you, if, if you gave your heart to Jesus, the Bible says you died. You died with him to be raised with him. Dead people don't complain. <laughs> Dead people don't argue. I've done a ton of funerals. Never in the middle of a funeral did I see someone pop up and go, hey, man, seriously, you going to say that right now? When you're gone, you're gone. I want you to know right now the vision. Let me give you our original vision statement. 1999. Every, Every word I prayed over, every word when we started the church, I was very fearful to start a church and get going and then not know what direction. If you know me, you know I will be super slow to make sure it's God because once it's God, it's on. Like a pit bull on whatever pit bull's getting on, it's on. <laughs> Here's our original mission statement. To be and develop committed Christians with the passion to please God a desire to fulfill their purpose on the earth, and a compassion for the lost. To proclaim God's truth to our neighborhoods and our cities and our world. To bring healing and help to the, victim, help to the victims of sin, loss, and pain. To build people in their knowledge and their relationship with God. To place them in service. Someone say dream team. To place people in service for God, in his church, and to further his kingdom to train and send ministers and ministries for future Harvest Field, to keep our lives and ministry focused on what? Not on what's going on in the Christian culture. Not I went to a conference and they said we should do. I saw this new thing on a podcast. Maybe we, we're, we're good. Any good new ideas, we want to learn and grow. But as far as the direction, the direction is locked. We ain't changing it at all. We're going to keep doing what God told us to do. Because just so you know, it's been working. Can I get a big amen? To keep our lives and ministry focused on God and his plan, the plan he has for us. To be a church where the hurting get healing. The lost are found. And those who are down get up. A church for the harvest. <clears throat> or in short, if you want to know, because that's a whole paragraph. It's know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference. You need to know that the vision of God, number one, please. You need to know that if you want to know how to get in vision with God, it's pretty simple. Vision comes when we walk in agreement with Jesus. Well, I'm in agreement with Jesus. Are you in agreement with Jesus when he said that he saw people hurting and broken? Or, 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 or is the version of Jesus you have just the one that does for you? I've talked to people with no money, overdrawn. I've talked to people with a lot of money, and you'd be amazed. Don't get me wrong, if I had to pick more money or less, I would just pick more. I thought that was funny and you should laugh, but whatever. If I have to pick more or less, I'm picking more. That's okay. That being said, I've talked to people that you would think, I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a priest, but people still confess to me for some reason. You'd be amazed at people that you admire and you wish they had their life. You'd be amazed that some of them want your life because you're functioning and doing what God is asking them to do. God forbid you waste all your life trying to get a mortgage only just to get it and to find out that once you got what you thought was going to make everything better, it didn't do as much for you as you thought. Once you reach the place in the company where now you're a big shot, now what's this? we always want what we have. We don't want what we don't have. Every time we want to do something new, we notice what we don't have and we long for that. And we don't realize when you go try to get that, you often leave the things you are supposed to be doing to get the new thing. So now you go get the new thing and now you're missing the old thing. And now you're in the middle. Universal sign of confusion in the middle. Vision comes when we walk in agreement with Jesus. Jesus loves serves people, and builds his church. Do you. Jesus loves people, 
He serves people and he builds and cares about his church. If you want to know the vision of Jesus in Church of the Harvest, it's to find people that feel like outcasts, people that don't feel like they belong. We've had people off the streets. We've had people out of jail. We've had pastors that have walked away from church and they have come back to this house because it don't matter whether you are rich or poor, black or white, own 12 businesses or can't afford an apartment. Everyone needs to know that God has value for their life and everyone needs to know that God is gonna give you purpose in your life. If your purpose is only about you, you're gonna ask God to bless your will instead of praying that you can do God's will. And here's what I want to tell you. It's a lie that you, you think that when you get there, it's going to get better. How many thought your life, be honest, when you got out of high school, you thought, ah, oh, now life's going to start. Raise your hand. I'm like, yes. No more teachers. No more books. No more teachers. Dirty looks. Dude, once I'm out of school, dude, freedom. And you got out of school. You had to start paying rent. You're like, let's go back to school. Yeah. I miss all my friends. That was so cool. You got your driver's license? Yeah, freedom now, baby. Freedom. And now you got all this freedom, but you ain't got no gas money. <laughs> you got freedom, but you got two tickets. Your insurance is 500 bucks a month. And now your freedom that you thought was going to be like, <laughs> I get to do whatever, go wherever. Now you're like, I got six bucks. I can get a gallon. Point one of gas, I might be able to make it to work. And if I coast downhill and turn off the car, I might. You thought it was freedom, but it wasn't. Life is just like that. How many thought when you got married, life was going to start now? Once I get married, now I don't have to worry about uh, temptations anymore. I have a spouse. I don't got to worry about that single life. Now it's just going to be easy and we're going to get along we're going to dance at midnight <clears throat> i hope you dance at midnight <clears throat> but it's hard to dance at midnight when your back hurts and you're in bed at nine <clears throat> are you getting the point <clears throat> if you keep chasing your vision i'm going to prophesy what i believe to be true from the word and from lots of experience and talking to people for years. If you think you know what you want, I pray you get it as quick as you can, only to find out that you still need more than you thought and you better come on back. There's no reason to leave Jesus and go get something because you will be back. Because the world ain't got nothing nice for you. And God doesn't just, God wants you to be blessed and successful to a degree for sure. But make no mistake, if you think the will of God, that Jesus died, Jesus, the Bible says in John 3, 16 and 17, he died so you would prosper. No, God so loved the world, he gave his son so he could save the world. His goal was to save the world. If you, I'm spitting. Oh, it's good preaching when I'm spitting. Finger looking good up in here. Jesus died to save people. He wanted hurt people, broken people, Lost people, people that feel disenfranchised, people that have given up. He wanted them to know, I love you. I got a plan for you. I don't care how you feel, how many times you failed. I'm here and you got a shepherd. Here's the good news. You can get up from that dirty place you're in and come on up to a new level. That's the God we serve. That's the vision of God. That's the vision of this church. He loves people, but so do you. Or do you. When um, It's when we become alive in Christ. The Bible talks so many times that we become alive in Christ. You're not alive in Christ chasing your dreams. You become alive in Christ when you're walking in his purposes. I have so much energy when I'm doing what God wants me to do. Ask my kids. I'm a stark contrast person. <clears throat> After church, we'll be eating lunch around 2.30. I look like someone that had too much to drink. I'll be... <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but when it comes to the kingdom of God, I got this energy. Where does this energy come from? Well, some of it comes from monsters, but the rest of it, the rest of it comes from I'm getting to do the will of God. I'm doing what I was created for. I overcame suicidal thoughts and depression, overcame physical problems and heartbreaks. 
I didn't overcome that just so I could sit in the house and go, look, I got the bill that such as paid for. I did it so I could do the will of God, so I could find freedom in my life and pursue the only thing that's going to matter when the world ends. Vision elevates you above the daily grind. So vision comes when we walk in agreement with Jesus. Are you in agreement with Jesus? Well, yeah, I mean, I, we talk all the time. I know, but are you in agreement that you should be reaching people? If we are, then we should be not running from a long line, running to the long line, not running. Now, some of you introverts are like, I got to get out of this church right now. He's wanting me to talk to people. This week, we'll talk about what? Next week, some of you introverts are going to love me next week. Hold on, stick around. Next week, we'll talk about how, okay? The vision of God is to reach people, is to save the world. And when you spend your whole life making it about yourself and what you want. Have you ever looked in the mirror when you got ready and like you looked far away? you like, you're far and like, let's go. I'm looking all right. And you got closer. <laughs> A little closer, and then you turn the light on. Oh, you ever turn the light on? Dude, the lighting is everything. And why did I always put the fluorescent lights in the bathroom? <laughs> Dingy lights in restaurants, because they ain't want you to see all everything that's going on in them tables and chairs. But your fluorescent light in your bathroom, you're like, what is going on here? <laughs> you look close, you see every hole, every blemish, every... <clears throat> Everything that's wrong, you're like, is my, is my face not even symmetrical? <laughs> the longer you look and the closer you get, the, that's exactly what it's like when you live for yourself. That's exactly what it's like when you keep wanting to just live for yourself. And no offense, but living for yourself does not grant long-term fulfillment. It always leaves you wondering what's happening. And when you live for yourself, everything better go perfect just to get you temporary fulfillment. The marriage better go good. Every kid better do what they say. Your boss better promote you. You're literally walking on a tightrope when you live for yourself because everything has to go perfect. And if it doesn't go perfect, you end up getting very frustrated at the people you counted on to make you happy because you were wanting, you're mad because they didn't make you happy. And Jesus is like, hey, I've been asking you to the prom for years and you just wouldn't say yes. If you'd asked me, I'd have shown up, I'd have pulled up in a limo, I'd have treated you right. You need to know that God is calling for you to live in vision. Vision is empowering. Vision gives you strength. But the same way vision comes when you walk in agreement with Jesus. And some of us, that hurts because some of us, our life started like that. And then your life began to slide away. It started to be about Jesus and his church and other people. And some of us that have even done it for a long time, we become guilty that the vision changes from others to us. And then we start getting our feelings hurt because we weren't noticed. Or let me give you a great statement. When, men, when the ministry you do becomes about you, it's the beginning of the end. The second we add up who thanked me, who didn't appreciate me, why did they thank him and not me? Is is the reason pastors on the is the reason Caesar's on the pastor team only because is it because he's a good man? Or is it just because he's a Raider fan? I ain't never seen a 49er fan sit by pastor his whole life. <laughs> the second you make it about you, I, I'm not trying to make me, this is gonna, this is gonna help some people. This is gonna give you, oh yeah, that's right. We got, oh, the other guy on the pastor team's a Niner fan. You just confess that. We're gonna have a meeting after church. <laughs> Caesar, you, me, Alex. Alex, come to the dark side, baby. Come to the dark side. I know shouldn't say that in church because light and dark, but. God is so good, and he wants you to have a vision. <clears throat> he doesn't want you to be con continually disappointed. The Bible says build your house on a rock. 
When you build it right, any storm doesn't matter. <laughs> At, people accuse you, don't matter. Why? It, it, it's where I'm built. Someone says you don't love me. You're wrong. I love you. Why didn't that make you mad? That's where I'm standing. Vision gives you energy. Vision gives you godly fulfillment. Give, vision gives you agreement with Jesus that you're actually walking out his purposes. Be careful when you serve so much, then it stops becoming about Jesus. Let me tell you what I know about me. I know my flaws. I could never, ever in a million years ever be a pastor and not do it with my spirit and without vision. To me, it would be a joke. It would be insincere. I would just be posing. I would just, I would never, ever, I couldn't do it. You cannot do great ministry and great serving in the flesh. When I do ministry in the, when you do ministry in the flesh and it's not about Jesus, it becomes about you. I'm too tired. Now listen, I believe in rest. Watch this. Even when Jesus, even when Jesus walked away from healing all the people, he would go to rest. He would go to talk to his father. We believe in scheduling. Can I get a good amen? We believe in Sabbath. We believe in rest. We, be, we believe in you should not be, your life should have order. You shouldn't join 22 teams in the church unless you can beat every meeting and not miss it. But that being said, even when Jesus went to rest, it was only so he could come right back and do it again the next day. When you do ministry or you serve one another in your flesh, which means it's not vision. It's like we're, it's like we're giving God a tip. Well, he saved me. I don't mind. God wants you to get the vision for your life. Can I get a big amen? So vision comes when you walk in agreement with Jesus. Number two, last point of the day. Vision leaves when the worldly pressures and our flesh takes over. Vision comes when I walk in agreement with Jesus. I just read that Jesus loved all the people of the world, red and yellow, black and white. They are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Jesus loves everyone. But when vision leaves, vision leaves our life when worldly pressures take over and our flesh takes over. Watch this. If this ever happened to you, it's happened to me. On fire for Jesus, I've got a vision. I'm going to serve on the kids' team, the ushers' team. I'm, I'm going to do what God's asked me to do. I'm going to be a part of it. So excited, so elevated. You're literally rising because you're now you're living by your spirit, which the Bible says to, and not by your flesh. And then you get one phone call, and the negative phone call takes you from spirit to worldly pressures, worldly fear. <clears throat> oh. Has that ever happened to you? Just got home from the women's retreat. God is so good. He's got a plan for my life. I got a word. It's so amazing. What happened to this house? Spirit, when flesh or worries take over, it always pulls you down. Worries pull you down. I'm a planner. Be a planner, but don't be a worrier. It doesn't add a single day to your life. It don't fit, it, but it takes days away. So ready to serve God. One misunderstanding. Vision comes right back down. Vision comes when we walk in agreement with Jesus that we're going to be his followers. He's not going to be our followers. We'll be his. We'll reach people. We'll help people. Vision leaves when our flesh takes over or when our, our, when our flesh takes over or when uh, worldly pressures take over. Serving on the dream team, making a difference, really loving that you're doing and serving for Jesus. You're a servant of the Most High in Samaria in the church. You get one family problem, pulls you right back down. One money problem, one disagreement, right back down. I want to I share something. It may be the biggest offensive weapon I have in my life. Vision not only keeps us where we're supposed to be, it keeps me above where the devil wants me to be. Is When you know that you can't do this without vision, 
Matter of fact, I'll, I'll, I want to go this far, and this may seem irresponsible, but whatever it is, it is. If you don't, if you agree with it, amen me. If not, be quiet. Pray for me at home silently. <laughs> serving God and serving you every week, <clears throat> it keeps me on my toes. I have to stay where I need to stay with God. I have a responsibility to serve people well. <clears throat> Sometimes, this might not be perfectly right, but let me just explain it. This, this will connect with someone. Serving people is actually what puts me in the position of obedience. And once you get in the place of obedience, you know you can't walk in obedience without doing it in the Spirit of God anyway. Amen. Me being counted on every week, it, I, it's a good thing. It's not just a good thing for others. It's a good thing for me. If I'm not on any dream team and no one expects me to be there and I'm not an example to no one, and it's just, if I'm not connected, you know, I don't know. If there's a couple of good games on, I might watch you guys online. Watch, score, score. Thumbs up on the live stream. I was here. God bless you. Back to TV. I'm here. Love you, church. Check it out. <laughs> to serve is a good thing. Remember the marriage ceremony? And they have to end it with, tell death do you part. Divorce, no. Death, murder, acceptable. <laughs> I mean, they, they go so harsh on it. I'm trying to tell you that vision, it helps us to rise. I cannot stay in agreement with Jesus to reach lost people when everyone tells me why we can't, why we can't afford it, why it's too hard, and the problem with these type of people. Then you start hearing racism come out. Then you start hearing all this stuff. Well, why we can't, there's no way. How will we profit off that? If you let everyone talk you out of serving God, it'll bring you right back down to where you were, where there is no way God's going to make a way. And I've learned that in the moments where I don't know what to do, I don't know what's going to happen next, I just stay in the place of obedience. I'm going to walk in the Spirit, and until they drag me away in handcuffs, I'm going to be screaming, Jesus is Lord. He's got a plan for your life. He wants to use your life. God has purpose. One of the pastors in these testimonies when she came to our church, I told her, God has a plan for her life. He wants to use her. You're not just a person. That just sits in the crowd. I, just, I don't know. I go to Church of the Harvest. I, I go to Mesa. I go to another. No, no. You are an individual that God has a plan for. You're a part of the body of Christ. Some of us are mouths in the body. Let me hear you all the mouths. Yeah. Maybe a few too many mouths every once in a while. Where's all the arms and all the muscles at? Let me hear you. Yeah. The whole, we need the whole body of Christ. Everyone doesn't need to be the mouth. Everyone, you know, when we talked about the Building by Blueprint series, God needs the whole body to use your individual gifts to make this thing work. We'll talk about that more next week. Vision leaves when worldly pressures and flesh takes over. Matter of fact, it was, it was, uh, it's been a really, I'm not complaining, it's been a very, very busy year for me. Maybe, I don't know if I've ever physically or mentally worked this hard in a couple decades. We've got the DPH campus, which is amazing. So we gave up, we gave up, uh, you know, our regular days off. I know I can't do that forever, but this we we're celebrating about a year down there. We've got a lot of plans, a lot of work, a lot of things to fix up, and it's hot. <laughs> Does the heat slow anyone else else down, or is it just me? Does it? So. How many of those are when you're? How many of those are when you expend all your energy? What Taylor was helping me find out what's wrong with me. We think that my adrenal glands are just gone. I don't know if that's a thing or not, but it sounded right. So, you know, I'm, I'm, my mind's good, my heart's good, my outlook's good, but I'm, I'm just generally tired. I'm not as peppy as I used to be. So I go down yesterday to our uh, to our outreach every Saturday. If you get a chance, go to our outreach every Saturday in Del Paso Heights. It's amazing. I haven't been able to been there to been there. Oh, Lord. I haven't been able to be been in there. I needed to go down there yesterday. I just, I just needed to be there. 
I walked in. <laughs> my heart, it just started melting. It just, there are other things we have to do. The vision is not always just, just do this. We have to do, how many of us, we have to do a lot of things to build a church here. We need, it's more than just being there, but it's how we started our church, right? I was out there, I'm looking at our church. I see all these people from this campus and the others. We got a lot of people from the church helping. I see all these people that are hurting and broken. And I'm just getting like emotional. I can feel the Holy Spirit. I'm good, but I'm tired. How many ever knows when you're tired? You can be tired, but then when it's time to go to work, God gives you the anointing. And then when God's done, you unplug and you're like, you're like one of those the blow up Santa Claus on Christmas, they pull your plug, you're like, <laughs> you just go down. So I'm going down there yesterday to prove the point that when flesh takes over, you just, everything just dives and your worries and the whole vision goes down. And I'm sitting there saying, I had this beautiful moment. I'm, I'm looking at all the people. I got to talk to Robert and Joy a little bit from our church. I went out there. It just really did something for me to be with our church family out there, helping these lost people. And I said, I'll lock up. Hold on real quick. And I said, I said I'll lock up. And when I lock up, uh, I pulled my car outside the gate, which are locked, which turned out for good reason. I have my gate right out there, or my car right out there. I lock the gate. I'm feeling really nostalgic. I'm feeling really spiritual. I'm just like, wow. And I start, I start to text this on my social media. You ever been in the moment where God's moving and you just feel it's time to do that? Put up that text message, would you, darling? Like I said, the internet was down. <laughs> but I, anyway, I started, I started to write this text. There it is. I started to write this text. And as I got back in my truck, my, the music was on automatic play. So I'm in my truck. I lock the gate. I'm on the main street. I hop in my truck and I start messaging this out. And go ahead, babe, play this song. This song came on. It's like this perfect culmination moment of just the Holy Spirit. And as I'm just, I'm in the fields, man. I'm in the Holy Ghost fields. I can just feel the Holy Spirit. I start putting this on my social media. I came by our Saturday outreach today. I'm so encouraged to see that, that God, uh, to see just um, to see God moving, God's people loving and serving those in need, smiles and hugs, relationships being made, hope given, physical needs being met. It just blessed my soul in a deep way. To all those that serve on our team that are making making this possible, God's using you. Today reminded me what we started 24 years ago. We're still doing today. To God be the glory for the things he's done. And then I said, thank you, Lord, for this campus you placed in our hands. It's perfectly located in a place that has brokenness and need, which is where Jesus would go. In my truck, I'm feeling the vision. I'm feeling the Holy Spirit. Just perfect moment. The song came on without me knowing it. And number two of our lesson, of our message today, is when the flesh hits, it all just goes downhill. I'm feeling this amazing moment. I'm starting to tear up in my truck like, today is a good day. Didn't even have to use the AK, today is a good day. And as I'm feeling it, I look up and all of a sudden, this guy is running. And as he's running, he's, he's got a huge case of beer. And he's just booking it right towards me. I'm like, what is, What's happening? 20 yards behind him, the owner is coming. Stop him! Stop that guy! I'm all, what? What is happening right now? And the guy runs by me with the case of beer, and the, the spiritual moment is gone. Now, now I'm in an episode of Cops. This guy's running. He knocks on the door. He, I roll down the window. I'm like, hey, man, what's going on? He goes, that guy just stole stuff from my store. He goes, can I get a ride? to go, get in. <laughs> so now... We're driving down the street chasing this guy. Oh my and right about at this moment, I wasn't exactly sure what I was doing or why I was doing it. And it kind of it kind of hit me, should I be doing this right now? 
He goes, he's right there. So we start tracking this guy. He cuts across the field. Now I'm into hunt mode. We're hunting. So now <laughs> I'm cutting across. We're driving through here. And halfway through it, the, and this guy looks at me right in the middle of the chase. He's right there. Cut him off. So we start going this way. And I'm, you ever have those moments where you're like, what am I doing right now? <laughs> Should I be doing this? <laughs> Is this guy going to come to the church in three weeks in Del Paso Heights and go, hey, wait a minute. You're the guy. And right in the middle of the chase, the guy bumps me and goes, hey, man, thanks a lot for coming through for me. And so now we're chasing the guy. And I'm thinking, what am I doing? Why am I even here? Why did I agree to this? Is, it, is this my job? Is this what God wants me to do? So we cut him off. I let him out. He goes chasing the guy. And my spiritual moment, mighty one, holy God. The flesh hit, drama hit. Now it's like, bad boys, bad boys. What you going to do? And I'm just cruising. It really is, we close up today. It really is amazing how quick you can go from a heartfelt vision to crashing down to normal stuff. As I'm texting about the vision and the goodness of God that's blessing my soul, crime is happening right in front of me. And I may or may not be a part-time sheriff now. I don't even know. God wants you to live with vision. I'm sure glad I finished that and sent it. Because as funny as it was, you'd be amazed how many times the enemy plans to interrupt your godly moments with dramatic things. And if you're not disciplined, you'll give up the beautiful parts of life because distraction came. Can I give you some next level advice that I believe is next level and how to rise and do what God called you to be? I'm not shaken hardly at all by distractions because I've already planned that I know they're coming. Ask my family. They've rarely heard me say, can you believe someone did? Yep, I believe it. <laughs> Can you believe someone said? They, they don't hear me say that. <clears throat> I know it's coming. I know a phone call's coming of negativity and the problem with this and the what. I know it. <clears throat> I, I know that there'll be challenges. It's fine. I, I already know it. And when it comes, watch, it may tell you one story, but its real purpose is to pull you right back down to the front. So excuse me if I just want to stay up here for a little bit. The air is nice up here. The peace is nice up here. The family time is nice up here. The mental freedom I have, the mental health, yeah, I don't got a mental health problem. Don't. Had one. I'm pretty sure the enemy worked really hard to make sure I'd have one. And when I found that I could follow God and level up my life and rise up, I realized that God wants to give me moments of vision and pursuing vision and reflective enjoyment. Let me tell you what happens almost every Sunday or ministry night in my life. My family will come here, we will leave, and we'll begin to talk about not the negative stuff, every good thing God did. We'll We'll be eating something. And someone will go, did you see so-and-so was there? Man, it hurt. They sound like they're doing great. Hey, did you see so-and-so? It's like three weeks in a row. Let's go. Talking about the goodness of the Lord. Why? Because vision elevates you above this simple, dumb, grinding, painful, dramatic life of can you believe? And it li- lets you live up here. Honestly, I love everyone. I simply will not stay. I just won't. In long conversation. If you need counseling, we got you. You have one prayer request. If you want, uh, you need help navigating a tough situation, we got you. But if the only goal is to talk about everything that's wrong and negative, you need to know negativity is my enemy because it keeps bringing me down when Jesus is trying to lift me up. That's why Jesus kept saying, do not love this world or anything in it. Don't fall in love with where you live or your homes or worry about what you're going to eat. Lift up your eyes and see the kingdom of God. God is trying to help you lift up your eyes so you can see the good things. 
Clap it up if you're grateful for a God that wants to lift you up, not bring you down, lift you up. And the Bible says, if you give your life to Christ and you let the old self die, you become born again. And now the old things are dead and everything is new. Old things have passed. The old things have passed. Let's just keep it right where it's supposed to be. And the re- here's a good question as we close up. But what about the stuff I'm responsible for? That like preaches pretty good, but don't I have a responsibility for my family? Absolutely. What about my business? Don't I have a responsibility? Oh, you, you, yes, you have responsibility. But if your responsibilities are above and before God's vision for our life, you may have an idol that you bow down to and serve more than you serve him. Sometimes when we talk about the Bible, great, great people that learn stuff, we have to wrestle with things sometimes. And the generic argument I've heard my whole life Well, the church can't expect me because I've got kids. Yeah, i got kids too. And we always fear like we can't do both. You ever feel that? The fear, why can't? Because I have, I mean, I would love to serve God more, but I have a job. Yeah, everyone's got jobs. Not new, no offense, but everyone's got a job. I got kids. Yeah, a lot of people got kids too. And some people have puppies that they treat like kids, so it's the same thing. If God is first, everything else he'll add to your life. I don't know. Taylor, you doing okay? Are you sure? I was a pastor and I put God first. Are you sure, babe? Sure? Did Aaron do anything to make you kind of feel this? You okay? All the thoughts of why you can't do what God says because of fill in the blank. I want to submit a thought for you to pray about. The enemy of your soul loves to see you caged, trapped, frustrated, and angry. Because when we're that way, that's when we start medicating, doing all the wrong thing, getting in the relationship. The enemy wants to bring you down. Why? Because Lucifer, the devil, used to be an angel. He knows what it's like to be up high. But he was high, but he wasn't submitted. He wanted, Satan wanted, Satan got kicked out of heaven. You know why? He wanted to know why he was doing all the work, but he wasn't getting all the glory. Be careful when your life is about I. You cannot live in vision and talk about I and me and me and I. Me and I, and I don't, and I don't feel, and I think, I, I don't mean this mean, but I mean this as a stern, loving thing. Be careful, because if you keep living by what you think, all those kids, whatever happens next, if you do it your way, God will let you have your way. He'll let you have your will. He'll let you try to do it your way. And then when it doesn't work, he will be there to pick up the pieces for sure. But the goal of God was never that you would run from him and have to learn the hard way. So we would acknowledge him and bypass. How many said, how many would say this today? You already know if you did it the first way, the right way the first time, you could have just saved thousands of dollars, divorces and pain. Raise your hand. If I had just did it right the first time, I'd have been fine. So we close up today. Allow God to give you vision. Agree with Jesus. Do you have vision in your life? Or is everything another problem? Listen, Jesus never said he'd come to solve all your problems. He said he would elevate you above it. Jesus never came to say, I've come to make sure there's no worldly life. No, he said, I make sure that I'll give you abundant life in the middle of a hard life. Two people can be going through the exact same thing. 
divorce, sickness, pain. If one's got vision and they're keeping their eyes up and one is looking down, simply the position of if they're looking up for God, what God's doing, what God's saying, or they're looking down, their lives will be totally different. We keep thinking it's about what's happening to us. It may have nothing to do with what's happening to you. It may all just be about which way you're looking when it happens. Bow your heads to me this morning.